Today, I want to go over adding on to the custom invoice that we created in our last video. Uh, if you haven't watched that, there'll be a link in the description below. Take a look at that. Um, that will show you how to create a custom invoice for your business and save that as a template. Now, we're going to start with a template and we're going to add lookup tables to this now. So, I'm going to bring up a template that uh, we created. And <clears throat> here's our invoice. We have our pop-up that we've discussed in the previous one, how to create that. So what you're going to do, the first thing you're going to do um, is you're going to create another table in this spreadsheet. You're going to go to table and then select one and then you're just going to use two columns. Now, in column A, you're going to want to have over here where we created our drop or our pop up menu. You want to make sure you have all of those items in column A. And you want to put an associated cost with them, an individual unit cost. Because in our invoice, we have quantity, unit price being. If you look at the VIC first six, it's $10, and this is the extended cost. So we're going to show you how to put in the lookup formula. In this particular method, the unit price is derived not by a, an individual lookup, but by a formula. And we're taking D2 divided by B2, our quantity, and coming up with a unit price. You can use that method. It's a simple formula, and it'll work. But a little later, I'll show you how you can use a lookup to derive that individual cost as well. The extended cost is using a lookup. It's B2, which is our quantity, multiplied by the lookup. So then you would put in your lookup. What are you looking up? We're looking up A2, which is our description, from table 1, column A. And the result value that you want is table 1, column B, or cost. All right. In this case, we're going to add a row, and we can show you what you need to do to. We're going to add a row below. Now, when you add the row, this the second time, you notice there's no formulas here. Your pop up is here, so we're just going to take the first item, our DW kit. We're going to put in a quantity of one. Hit return. Nothing appears here now. You can click here, and you notice our little yellow dot. If you just drag that down, that's going to copy the formula. And you'll notice down here is D3 divided by B3. But you could either copy this formula down, which is our lookup, but let's key it in. This way we'll get some experience keying it. So you're going to hit the equal, all right, we'll just move this down here, and you're going to hit equal. So what was it? Well, let's just review it again. B2, which is our quantity, right? All right, okay. So you, you're going to come in here, equal B3 in this case, multiplied by our lookup. So you're going to hold your shift key and the asterisk gives us the multiplied sign. If you just hit your lowercase x, it's going to go into another formula that you don't want. So just thought I'd bring that up. Once you have your multiplier in, type in lookup, hit return. Notice it gives us a couple of things here. It says 
search for. What do you want to search for? So you're going to search for what you have in A. In this case, A3, which is our descriptor. Where do you want to search? Click on Search Where. Come over to Table 1, Column A. So you're going to search for DW Kit in Table 1, Column A. And what are your result values? Click on your result values, and you're going to click on Column B. Click on the green check. Oops. Boom. So now if we look at the formula, we'll just bring it up so we can review it. So it's B3, our quantity, multiplied by a lookup of the descriptor, the product, in, and it has to match on table one, column A, and it's going to get the cost from table one, column B, which in this case is $2,500. All right, so let's just test it out. Let's change the quantity to two. Notice the unit cost did not change. The extended cost changed to 5000 Now, so this is one methodology that you can use. What's nice from this point forward, if you hold down that little angle down there and you drag it down, notice we have errors in our formulas. Well, we have errors in our formula because it cannot complete those formulas, those lookups, because nothing is in column A. So if you go to column A and you hit your pop-up and you say, well, all right, we have Vic Firth sticks, DW kit, select something else. We'll say uh, DW snare. Notice the extended price came out because there's no quantity. Hit one, return. Notice now the unit price filled in and the extended price filled in. So our DW snare, if you go over to table one, DW snare, $9.99. So what are some of the reasons you would want to do this? Okay. First of all, if your prices ever change, you don't have to do the individual price on the individual invoice. All you have to do is say, well, um, let's just say one we have here, like the DW kit. Let's say that price went up. It's now uh, $3,200. There you go. DW kit automatically updated the cost and your individual unit price. So <clears throat> anytime your inventory goes up in cost, when you're compiling an individual invoice for a customer, they will automatically recalculate. So that's one methodology that you can use. And using in column C, we're using the cost divided by quantity is going to give you your individual unit price. Now, once you have two rows in, then you save it as a template, and then you don't have to put the formulas in again. You would just drag it down, okay? So what I mean is, let's take these out. Delete selected rows. All right. Now, even if you go into here and you say you want to start your invoice with miscellaneous, oops, sorry, miscellaneous because miscellaneous has a zero cost. All right. So now when you save this as a template, when you bring it up again, it's going to come in with miscellaneous zero cost. And then you just at that point, go in, select an item, Vic Firth Sticks, you notice 
ten dollars um, one okay and you can, if you you can change start this with zero so when you save it as a template you can have the zero and or in this case one because we're using the lookup or the divide here now when you set when you save that bring it up from that point forward it'll bring those formulas down and you don't have to rekey them all the time all right so then you would just select whatever items you want quantity it'll extend out all right then when you print this okay you want to make sure when you print it that you don't get this table you just want to print the invoice for your customer and you can when i say print you can either print it as a hard copy and send it or give it to them if they're in the shop or uh, print it as a pdf and send it to them electronically so again this is the method using the lookup and taking the cost divided by the quantity to come up with the unit price our second method is going to use a lookup for both items all right so let's look at that we're going to go here we're going to start with our same basic template that we started with all right now <clears throat> so if i drag this down again notice nothing so we'll select an item and we'll say vader sticks and we'll do a quantity of one nothing nothing at all so how do we get our individual unit price you're going to do well let's look at the formula first all right so if you look at the formula it's straight does a lookup and then what's it looking up it's looking up a2 and then from the table it's getting it's matching and then getting the cost all right all right let's try it come in equal in this case it's a3 all right then you're just going to type lookup oh i made a mistake that's incorrect you're going to come in and you're going to say equal lookup enter okay now it says search for now you're going to put in a3 search where now here i put that table on a different tab so it will go out to this tab and get the information but it won't be if you have a point of sale uh, system it won't this table won't be facing your customer so again column a result values column b if we come back to here just to look at it you'll see so we're doing a3 we're doing a lookup of a3 from here and getting the cost from here hit your green check all right vader sticks well let's go back let's just make sure the cost vader sticks five dollars for a pair all right there you go the extended cost let's change this value to two our extended cost again there's no um formula in here let's review this formula this formula is quantity b2 times the lookup of a2 in table 1a and table 1 cost 
All right, so let's try that. Equal quantity. Now, again, here you're going to use the shift asterisk to get the multiplier. Then you're going to type in lookup. Return. Search for Vader Sticks A3. Search where invoice or this other tab, column A, and your result value, column B. Or in this case, it's coming up cost in here because I labeled this column cost. So you could label these anything you want, and that's what will appear here. Hit your green check mark. There it is, 10 bucks. And again, um, the nice and, and so now we have two lookups if you on this table. So you see here we have lookup A3, our Vader sticks on items cost table right here, column A and column B. Now at this point, once you have this done and you know it's working properly, again I would go in here. Select miscellaneous. Uh, I would just do two or zero, and there you go. Save this as your template. Now you have a good one to bring up, and then when you bring this up for your customer, you can drag these down. Boom. Your formulas are down. But you have to have at least the two rows. And then all you do is go in, select Zodwig Kit, put in the quantity, go down, and Promark Sticks, uh, 12. All right. Um, and, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever else you want. And again, once or if your your cost changes, you just come back to this table, change it in this table, and any new invoice that you issue will reflect the new cost. All right, so that's it for today, and you know I hope this helped, and I hope you have a lot of fun with it. Thank you very much. Talk to you soon. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for viewing our content. Don't forget to click the like button and subscribe so you can see all our training videos as well as links to download our podcast.